Well, hello and welcome back to Teal House Farm. We already have everything going this morning. The big girls are working on making some dandelion jelly. We're just getting everything warmed up, so they're doing other stuff while it's getting ready. JJ is doing stencils, if you didn't hear that. Annie was doing a sticker book. Ivy is making a fort out of the living room. Um, but anyway, what? You're doing what? You're doing rock? Oh, blocks. I was building with blocks. And Pat's just causing chaos. What are you doing? What are you going to play with? Polly Pocket? Okay, put it on the table. If you have never made dandelion jelly before, I will link a video below because um, we made a couple videos about it. It's pretty simple. It tastes a little bit like honey with a little bit of a lemony taste. The girls really like it. It only needs two cups of dandelion heads, some sugar and some pectin. It's a very easy recipe. Uh, and you put a little lemon juice in there for a sippy. It's super easy. Uh, the kids can kind of do it almost by themselves with just a little bit of supervision on the stove. So it's, it's a fun one. Um, that the girls like to do. We've also deep fried dandelion heads before with some Cajun seasoning and then dipped them in like chipotle ranch. It's really good. So dandelions are not just a weed, they are food too. And the greens you can put on your salad, but they are kind of bitter, I'll be honest. But anyway, they're gonna finish that project. And uh, Sam is busy trying to find me a new washing machine. So this is my old washing machine. You may remember when we first started vlogging, so this thing is like six or seven years old, I bought this apartment-sized portable washing machine because it was uh, solar capable. Basically what that means is it's small and it doesn't have a big motor, so the drag it would put on a solar power system is very small compared to a regular washing machine. Washing machines actually don't use very much electricity, believe it or not. It's the initial push that it takes to start spinning a large tub that is really hard on a solar power. Because um, solar, it's not just about what's in your battery, it's about how much you need in one burst as well. And so we specifically bought that one because we thought we were going to go 100% solar and we needed something that didn't need a huge burst uh, when it first started up. And that filled the ticket. And then we decided that we weren't going to go solar, but I kept that washing machine anyway because it still worked. And honestly, it's uh, like this 100% plastic made in China washing machine. We really didn't think it was going to last more than a year or two. It did not look heavy duty. And here we are like seven years later using it at least three times a day and it was a workhorse. But the uh, motor finally gave out it doesn't spin anymore so it hasn't been washing anything unfortunately so i have been washing everything in the bathtub which is a good workout but it's not fun so we're attempting to find something to replace that um, so that we can get back to doing regular laundry because as much as it sounds romantic to be like ma ingles out in the wild doing your laundry it is not and so i do not want to have to do it forever and ever we're going to get that thing replaced and then Sam is also, we need to do some work and get ready for our baby sheep that should be coming really soon. We've already kind of hooked up with the person that we are buying them from. They're not quite ready, but we got to go check fence. We got to make sure the stall's ready. We got to get everything going. But really, my most important thing today is to find a washing machine because that washing machine has been down for a week and I'm, I'm ready to get it replaced. Micah and Ivy get on finishing their dandelion jelly. They've done most of the work themselves up to this point. I'm helping them with the canning part though, just because it does need to be precise and it's super hot. So just making sure nobody gets hurt. But for the jelly, you make a tea first and that sat in the fridge for 24 hours and then we strained it and now we're making the jelly out of it. Everyone else is doing some painting. It keeps them really busy and out of the way, even though it is kind of messy, which isn't my favorite, but we need to make sure nobody got hurt during the canning process and paints are always a favorite. And then we clean up and we load up and we head to town because today is homeschool co-op day and we'll get out of Sam's way as he's going to work on some fencing on the farm. Everything is getting super green and we are almost ready to get our large livestock moved in. Ivy has taken up crocheting as a craft and I'm super proud of her because she kind of taught herself from some books and YouTube videos and now the crocheting goes with her wherever she goes and she likes to work on it in the van to keep busy. I teach a three-year-old class for the co-op so we get there first and I can get set up. This week we're doing African animals and so we got some lions and some giraffes and my co-teacher came up with this super cute lion craft for the little guys to complete. Meanwhile, while we're spending three hours at co-op, Sam was on the farm working on some fence. All right, we've got this beautiful, sunshiny spring day. 
we're going to work on our fence. Our little uh, lambs should be here in a couple weeks. So we need to get our pasture fence all ready to go for them. The first part about working on the fence is you just have to check and make sure kind of no posts are broken, check all the line, make sure it's not frayed anywhere. We use the step-in posts and T-posts and turbo wire combination. It turned out to be a really good fence for our sheep and goats. It's worked really well. It does need a lot of fixing every year. So that part is a little bit annoying but it is much, much cheaper than other fencing options out there, and it's a cheap option that actually works. I'll link a video below that goes into more specifics about how we set this up, but every spring looks like this. We have to go through and untangle the lines. We need to check all the T-posts. We need to check all the insulators for broken parts and replace things, but the replacements are super cheap. This is a very inexpensive fence compared to what's out there. So for us, it's worth the extra work to save thousands of dollars versus trying to install permanent fence. We do have quite a few broken posts. They get broken by deer that run through during hunting season and just snap everything apart. But these step-in posts are very inexpensive and Sam can pick some up in town. So we won't be able to finish today, but he will get this done this week. So our fence is a big mess and uh I really need to get in here with a weed eater and knock down a lot of the grass. And a lot of people might not like this, but I might spray the fence this year just to keep the weeds down and keep it a little bit more manageable. Since we're not selling the meat and it's just gonna be ours, I think I feel okay with that. One of the reasons a lot of this fence is knocked down is because we have a ton of deer that come through this, uh, this pasture. If you ever had this like electric uh, poly fence before, you know the deer just run straight through it. So they snap a lot of posts and snap a lot of wires. Before I can finish this project, I need to go get probably at least another 10 to 15 of those white uh, posts to help finish this project out. All right, so we did a lot of hemming and hawing this last week about what to do about the washing machine because we had literally just had a discussion like two days before it broke about whether or not we wanted to figure out a way to move the washer and dryer out of the kitchen. So Sam's in the kitchen, he's doing dishes. And uh, if you look along, so there's the cast iron. On the other side of the cast iron is the door where the washing machine is currently. Oh, thanks, JJ. That's a pretty flower. Um, spring is here. And to be able to have that area as a closet would make this house much more livable for us because we just don't have any storage here because it's an old house and people didn't used to have closets. So that's that's it on the other side there. So it's a, it would be a really big closet if there wasn't a washer and dryer in it. So we were talking about whether or not it would be possible to move it into the mud room because um, the mud room is completely unfinished. So it's basically not usable space. It's got a deep freeze in there and a bunch of like kids outside toys that all is in there right now. And so we were having that discussion and just kind of thinking about it. And then like two days later, the washing machine broke. And the problem is even if we wanted to do that, that is a big project and would not be done anytime soon. And so to get the washer that I would want, which would be like a extra large capacity, like commercial washer or a speed clean, it's not gonna fit in that closet now. Like you're not gonna get it in there. We can't fit a large standard size washer and especially not a commercial size washer. Um, in that closet, it's too small. Um, and so the question being whether we wanted to buy, you could buy the extra large washer now and take the dryer out and dry everything outside and hope that the mudroom is done for winter um, when it gets really tough to dry a lot of clothes outside. Um, or we could replace it with kind of what we have now, which is a which is the portable washing machine, which is smaller and it fits nicely in there. So we argued amongst ourselves a little bit about the, what's the smartest thing to do. And ultimately we decided we just basically reordered the same washing machine we already have, that portable washer, but we got the next size up. So the one I have now, what did you say it was? 1.5? Yeah, it's like 1.5 cubic feet. That's that's pretty small. How, do you know how big a regular washer is? Like a normal size one? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so it's about half capacity of what a regular size household washer is. And I could keep up on the laundry okay, but I couldn't wash big things. Like you can't wash blankets in there. And so you end up 
either washing them by hand or having to go to the laundromat or something like that, which is a pain. So they do have a larger version, which will still fit in that closet. And it was 2.4 cubic feet. So still not the same size as a more typical uh, household washer, but much closer. And it should be large enough for me to wash blankets. And that doesn't put any sort of pressure on us to make any sort of final, expensive final decision about whether or not we do in fact want to move washer and dryer out of the um, kitchen into somewhere else and do major construction to make that happen. So it lets us stay focused on the other projects we were already kind of working on and get those done and not feel rushed. So that was the final choice. So Sam, Sam's going to head to town here in a little bit to get what he needs to finish working on the fence. And I'm going to, I've ordered the washing machine and it should be here on Tuesday. So just four or five more days of hand washing in the tub. So I'm going to go do some more laundry now and then um, we'll be excited once it gets here and I don't have to do it by hand anymore. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next time.